Hey, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. It's part 11 of the How I Retouch Photos Photoshop tutorial series. There's only one more video to go, and then we'll have covered everything. So this goes back to a tutorial that I did where I talked about an overview of all the steps I take when I retouch images, and now I've made a 12-part video, one part for each of those steps along the way. Today, we're going to talk about creating lens flare and digital relighting. Uh, it's all pretty quick and easy. Hang with me. Before we get going, though, I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com all about how I retouch images um, and how you should retouch them as well. But I, I don't just cover one single image like we've been using here. And if you go back to part one, you can see all the steps along the way, all of this stuff. You can download the raw file, follow along, grab some actions and gradients and things that I'm sharing along the way uh, and learn hopefully a ton about Photoshop in the interim. Um, but I've got another whole course over on tutfit.com on how to retouch images. Um, and if you pick it up, it supports the site. It helps me do more free stuff like this. Uh, and it's just generally super cool of you to do that. But there's still plenty of free tutorials if you decide that you can't do it anyway. And I love you all the same. It's all good. Let's talk about digital relighting. So uh, here's what we're going to do. Before we do the... Actually, let's do the lens flare first. Um, and in this image, the lens flare is going to be more like... Uh, color haze, but it all begins the same way. So you create a new layer, and we're going to call this a lens, actually I'm going to do all lowercase here because that's just what I do, lens flare 01, and I'm going to grab the brush tool, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to choose a big brush, 500 pixels, no, I'm going to go 1200 pixels for the size of this image, no, I'm going to go 1900 pixels, yeah, that's more like it. Uh, whoop, we don't want to drop a black spot though, we want to drop a white spot, so I hit the letter X to flip foreground and background colors. Click once right in the middle of my document, and we've dropped our first lens flare. Hit Command or Control J to duplicate the lens flare. We're going to name this lens flare Lens Flare 02, because what we're going to do is we're going to colorize the bottom lens flare. Now you can do this using hue saturation, um, and I'll, that's probably what I'll do. So I'll just add a hue saturation adjustment layer, hold down the Alter Option key, and clip it to the lens flare below. I'm going to tick on Colorize, and because the lens flare is white, the first thing we need to do is drop the lightness. Now it still looks very white, and that's because there's a lens flare up top. But you can see, yes, in fact, we have a red lens flare. Boost, uh, boost saturation. Let's make this kind of a, a warm orangey glow color as the sun is rising here behind our model. And we've already color graded the image to give it a little bit of a reddish, uh, you know, orangey warm type color cast. Uh, so I kind of dig this. Maybe I'll make it a little bit brighter, something like that. Can I boost the saturation anymore? Yes, I can. All right, so we'll do something like that. Between red and orange, that looks cool. Uh, the great thing about this is we can always change this hue saturation adjustment whenever we want, and it will change the color of our lens flare. We can also boost the size of our lens flare, and the hue saturation will hang with it. So Command or Control T, let's make this lens flare a bit larger. So I'm going to hold down Shift and Option. This will be Shift and Alt on the PC. Scale it up just a little bit, maybe to like 125% of its original size. We're going to scale it with... The, the lens flare too, but I just want, uh, I want my colored bit to be a bit bigger than the white bit. So for the white section, we're going to set it to a blend mode of linear dodge add. I'll show you why I do this in just a second. For the original lens flare, we're going to set it to blend mode of screen. You don't have to worry about setting a blend mode for your hue saturation adjustment layer. That just rolls with whatever this original lens flare is doing. Uh, now for the original, or for lens flare two, the one that's linear dodge add, we want to reduce the fill opacity. When we reduce fill opacity, there's something about linear dodge add. You can see how it's like interacting with her arm. It almost looks like the sun would really be interacting with uh, her arm if the sun was right there behind her. Now, obviously, the lighting is way off, but the way that the light almost like fakes wrapping around an object, I don't know. It's just kind of a cool effect. Uh, I'm going to reduce the opacity of the original lens flare, and I'm going to reduce I'm gonna reduce the fill opacity quite a bit more here with the, uh, with the lens flare O2. Something like that, and we get this nice, really glowing orange orb. So what we can do is we can select the lens flare 1, hold down shift, select lens flare 2. We've got all of our stuff grouped up there. Command or control G to actually group it. And I'm going to select this and call this uh, lens flare. And what we would do at this point is we can actually just transform this layer group. So with the layer group selected, hit Command or Control T, and uh, we can obviously move it wherever we want. But I want to make this much, much bigger. i got to zoom out. I'm going to hold down Shift and the Alter Option key and just make this very large. Now, one of the things this is going to do is it's going to make our file size, um, what's the word? Oh, enormous. Our file size is already 1.4 gigabytes. You're going to see this is probably going to take it well up above 2 gigabytes. 
We're going to trim it down, though, because we're going to end up getting rid of all of this junk out here. But I'm, I just want to get it set in the right spot. I want it to look right. Um, maybe what I'll do is bring it up like this. Right click, choose distort, drag this bottom portion over a little bit, something like that. Drag this out this way. I'm just looking for a way to kind of spread it out. I want it to just be like kissing across the side of her hair, uh, but still not be like, you know, I don't want it to be solid white up in that corner or even look like it's getting close to solid white. So that's kind of important. There we go. Maybe something, something kind of like that, actually. That's kind of cool. Oh, hello. There we go. All right, so go ahead and hit the check icon. Remember, 1.43 gigabytes down here for the file size. Let's see what it increases to. Yikes. 4.4 gigabytes, and it's just one image. We're going to we're gonna help this out, though, because what we're going to do is we're going to hit Command or Control A, and we're going to duplicate this layer up to a new layer. So what it's going to do is it's just going to take the bit of lens flare that's in our image and duplicate it up so we can delete the huge lens flare, right? Delete that, right? We're already down to 2.76 gigabytes. Hey, hey. I'm going to call this, I'm going to rename this file, uh, or the layer, excuse me, once again, lens flare hyphen, uh, lens flare hyphen zero one. And then also this layer will do the same thing. Command or Control A to select everything. Let me zoom in a little bit here. All right, select that layer, Command or Control A to select everything. As I said, Command or Control J, pop it up onto its own layer. Delete the original lens flare hyphen O2. Uh, you can see it's preserved, linear dodge add, fill at 28%, great. Uh, let's just say lens hyphen flare hyphen O2. And you can see we're just at 1.72 gigabytes now, not a hefty 4.4 gigabytes. So it's a, a, a seemingly not very important little thing to do, but it can save you a lot of hard drive space as well. So we've got this kind of cool lens flare. What we can do is just reduce the overall opacity by just reducing the opacity of the layer group. Part of the issue is we're starting to see kind of some subtle banding. I don't know if you can see that, but there is some banding going on. That's what the last and final step of this tutorial process will cover. It will cover helping just kind of mesh all of our tones together, have everything fade together beautifully and smoothly. So, and oh, by the way, we probably should do a little before and after. So there's before, there's after. And that's why I call this digital relighting because it does so much to just change the dynamic and the, the way that the lighting of the scene looks that it, it's virtually digitally relighting your image. So if we're digitally relighting your image and creating lens flares and everything else that goes along with it, saving two and a half gigabytes of file size, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Have you ever thought about the fact that there was a point in your life where your parents picked you up and put you down and never picked you up again? Like, ever picked you up again? That's crazy to think about. Go ahead and hit the like button for this video. Also, subscribe to my channel. Make sure you sign up for my newsletter. You get 30 free tips and tricks. It's a video delivered, bam, instantaneously, right to your inbox. Also, you can follow me on Snapchat, you can follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on Twitter, and you can follow me on Facebook. I'll catch you guys in the next video.